Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And today I'm doing the booktube giving tag, which the original video is by Elliot. I first saw this on Science Literature Alliance. I will link both videos down below as long as the details of how to donate to the charity and the questions if you are interested in doing this. So question number one, what's a book that I would give to everyone if I could? And for this, because I did kind of look over the questions ahead of time, I, I decided I wanted to choose something that I have on my shelf, something that I own. And that can be a little bit hard, especially because even if you're a fantasy or a science fiction reader, you, the taste can vary so widely. When I came back to the question, it was what would I want to give, not necessarily what the reader would want to receive. And in that case, that changed. It changed the perspective. And a book that I would love to give to everybody to read because I think it works for multiple reading levels. You can read it and it's a I think it's actually a young adult book, but you can read it as middle grade. You can read it as an adult and still enjoy it. And it's just, it's fun. And that book is Dealing with Dragons by Patricia Reed. And this is about the Princess Cimarron who, everything she wants to learn, she's being told, is not what princesses are supposed to do. And when it, she comes upon the plot that her parents are trying to arrange a marriage for her, she decides that she's had enough and she takes the advice of a talking frog and goes and forges her own future. A future where she gets to be true to herself, but she also doesn't give up who she is. And I think that is an important story for anybody at any age. Besides, Patricia Reed does a great job at poking at fairy tales, subverting your expectations with fairy tales. So this is a lot of fun. So question number two, what's a book you couldn't give a rat's hiney to? And I don't necessarily think there's a book that I'm just like, yeah, would, mm, no, I take that back. Okay, uh, as I was thinking about this, a book that I have absolutely no desire to read is the Ballad of songs in the newest uh, Hunger Games that follow President Snow, whatever the name is. I'm going to put a picture up here so you'll see it. But I DNF'd the second book in the Hunger Games because I could not get past Katniss's character. The concept was interesting, but the execution just drove me nuts. And since I didn't finish the original trilogy, I have absolutely no interest in going and reading about the head honcho bad guy as a youth. Just don't care. Number three, given that the holidays are coming up because I am filming this before Christmas, what's a book that I hope someone would buy for me? Now, I don't celebrate Christmas with gift giving. I don't celebrate birthdays with gift giving. So my husband and I, we don't do gift giving. So this question is kind of unique as in, like I'm not expecting any gifts because I'm not going to get any because I've asked people not to. So, but if somebody were to completely disregard what I have asked, a book series that I am loving and I've given to my husband, he is enjoying a lot as well, is the Thai Child series by R.J. Barker. It starts with the Bone Ships, and I, I'm i just loving this series. It's the fantasy on the sea with a matriarchal society and dragons. Question number four. What's a book or series you've given up on? Yeah. This hurts. This really hurts to say, but I think we can pretty much say that I have given up on this one, which is I'm watching the TV series and they've already deviated from a direct translation of the books. I'm okay with. 
Now, as you can see, I still have them all because my husband likes them. And I probably will at one point eventually finish, but I'm no longer going to try to make this a priority. Question number five. Who's a character you wish an author would give more time to? I would like Aliette de Bodard to give more time to Tan. Um, this is the central character for Fireheart Tiger. And I was disappointed with this novella because it seemed like it was the end of a story. And I'd like to have gotten to travel with Tan through the whole adventure or through the whole story. And so that is somebody who I would really wish that the author had given more time to, had given us more of a book. And then who is a character you wish an author would give less time to? And that would be Pharaoh from the First Blade trilogy by Joe Abercrombie. I haven't finished the third book yet, but from the first and second, I'm sorry, but she doesn't really... It, it seems like you could have taken her out and not have lost anything. To me, Pharaoh isn't doing anything. Question number six. If you had to give up almost all of your books, which ones would you keep? So when I got married, I had way more books than even what I have now. And I had read all of them, but living in a college town, you're going to be moving a lot more and my husband basically put his foot down and said that I had to get rid of books. We didn't have the room for them. And so I already did this, I already whittled down to absolutely what I wanted to keep. And um, what I chose to keep were the ones that I knew I wanted to reread or that I do reread often. So I guess I could just take a picture of the shelf up there that has my books. Now, there are a few new additions to there, but the majority of what's there is what I kept. And it's only been this year that I've started expanding my collection, still only buying books that I know I want to reread. So I tend to only buy books that I've already read and not buy new books that I want to read because then otherwise they don't get read. The shelf right directly behind me is my to read shelf and I've either been gifted the book, picked it up free, or there's a few on here that I did buy and I just have not read myself. Number eight, what's the best book or bush it? Hmm. Number eight, what's the best book or bookish thing you've ever been given? And I'm not really a book collector of anything. And I'm sorry if you hear the vacuum. My husband knows I'm filming, but decided he needed a vacuum right now. And since he has Asman's breathing problems, if he decides he needs to vacuum, then I'm not going to argue. I don't necessarily think there's the a best book that I've ever been given. I very much cherish Pride and Prejudice. That was something I was given by my Aunt Susan. Uh, she also gave me The Seventh Princess by Nick Sullivan, which was a great middle grade read. I know my sister has given me many books throughout the years. My parents have given me many books. And I can't say that one of them is my favorite over the other. I'm very happy that I grew up in a family that cherishes reading because that has meant the world to me. Number nine, what's a book someone gave you that you wish you could give right back? The only time that has happened is when someone has been, and I know that this is a common thing from readers of science fiction fantasy, someone will be like, oh, you like to read here. I'm going to give you this book. And then they give you a book completely outside of your genre. And you're like, well, what am I supposed to do with this? This isn't what I'm going to read. <laughs> yeah, I would rather have somebody just give me money or give me a gift card to buy the book I want versus give me a book that they like, especially if they don't know that we read the same. So basically anything that's outside of my genre would be something I'd be like, here, you can have it back. And then last question, number 10, name a time in a book that a character was given something really meaningful to them. I remember in Alana, the first adventure, she was given the horse, actually. Um, a little explanation. She would never have just taken it for free. That's not her personality. But so the person in order to give it to her, gave it to her at a huge discount. 
in this, George is a thief and he found some horses that he knew were of great value and knew that one would work for her, Alana, who's going by Alan, and this time George does know she is a girl, I think, but she brings Prince Jonathan with her to the sale because someone has to go with her. And first she's like, you didn't steal him, and he's like, no, I, I knew you wouldn't to accept a horse for me if I stole it. He quotes her price, she's like, oh yes, I can pay that, and her friend Jonathan takes him aside and he's like, that horse is worth more. He goes, I know, but I'd give it to her outright if I could. But we both know she wouldn't take it. Or we both know he wouldn't take it because Jonathan at this point doesn't know she's a girl. And I just really like her answer or at the very end. George, Alana said, the other two looked at her. Her face was bewildered. I, I don't understand, she stammered. Why do this for me? You went to a lot of trouble. Why? And that always stuck with me is somebody saw that she needed something. They knew she wasn't going to take it for free. They, they still managed to give it to her, but in a way that she would accept. And Moonlight goes with her through the rest of the series, and it's a lot of fun. If you haven't been tagged, I would love to hear your thoughts. I don't think I've heard Christina or Maya do this tag, and I would really be interested in their answers. Otherwise, if you haven't done this tag and are interested too, please do so and let me know so then I can watch your answers. Thank you and have a great day.